this morning. On behalf of the Saskatoon Public Library Board, I'm delighted to be here as we open the doors to the Round Prairie Branch. I know it took a lot of work from a lot of people to get us to this point, and the board would like to express its sincere gratitude to everyone who made this day a long-awaited reality. I'd like to extend a very special thank you to the elders involved in the naming of this branch. I am I'm both humbled and heartened by your faith in the library and uh, your support for the library, so thank you. For more than 100 years, SPL has played an essential role in bringing our city together. And as our society becomes increasingly complex and busy, we need libraries today more than ever before. Whether it's through book clubs, early literacy programs, or English as an additional language services, libraries are one of the last truly democratic and inclusive spaces. As stated in our newly released strategic plan, Everyone has access to the library, regardless of age, gender, ethnicity, income, abilities, or other barriers. This new branch is a testament to our commitment to community and accessibility. It has been encouraging to see SPL move forward so purposefully in responding to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. The naming of this branch is a means of honoring the Round Prairie people is the latest, but certainly not the only, example of SPL's dedication to reconciliation. In the past year alone, the library has launched a Read for Reconciliation program, opened a reconciliation reading room at Francis Morrison Central Library, and formally committed, through its strategic plan, to, a, to elevating Indigenous voices throughout the organization. And I understand there are many more announcements to come, so please stay tuned. It's also important to note that the Saskatoon Public Library is moving towards a more agile and community-focused service model, where the library system is capable of both anticipating and meeting the needs of the communities and Saskatoon's increasingly diverse population. This means providing services, programs, collections, technology, and spaces that matter most to the communities each branch serves. This will be done through consultations, through emulating best practices employed by other library systems across North America and beyond, and most importantly, through listening and ensuring our workforce is prepared to meet the current and the future needs of patrons. So again, in closing, it's with a great deal of pride and pleasure and enthusiasm that we open the Saskatoon Public Library Round Prairie Branch today, and I thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please welcome Carol Cooley, CEO and Director of Libraries. Thanks, Carol. Oh, so, hello, and thanks for joining us this morning as we open uh, the doors to the new Round Prairie Branch, which is our ninth location here in Saskatoon. Um, and I'd like to thank all the guests and dignitaries who attended um, and spoke and are here to honor the branch. As we gather here today, I'd like to acknowledge that we're located on Treaty 6 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis. Saskatoon Public Library, like Lisa said, is committed to responding to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. The naming of this branch is in response to actions number 79. Participate in a strategy to commemorate Indigenous people's history and contributions to Canada. We believe that the name of this branch honors the legacy of the people of Round Prairie and acknowledges the injustices they suffered and celebrates the important contributions that the Métis have made to Saskatoon and to Saskatchewan. We're also pleased to be serving the neighborhood of Stonebridge. This is a little short. Um, libraries are community hubs that provide critically important services from story time programs that improve childhood liter literacy and social skills um, to English language programs that help our city's many newcomers learn English and establish important social circles. A little bit about the branch. Um, this branch has several features that are completely new to SPL and indicative of our commitment to modernizing the library system. The Innovation Lab will provide opportunities for people of all ages to access technology, including design programs and video and music editing software. 
The lab is a place where people can come together to create, invent, and learn in a wide array of fields from science and engineering and video, science and engineering, math, art, and design. We also offer a dedicated games room where people of all ages can play video games in a safe and collaborative space. And another feature we'd added to this branch are Google Chromebooks. So we're moving away from stationary computers and allowing people to use technology anywhere in the branch. And probably right in front of that fireplace might be somebody's favorite place to be. And not only do these new services enhance what we currently provide, they're an important step in bridging the digital divide between those who can afford to access technologies and those who can't. In closing, I'd like to thank the many people who were involved in the design and construction of the branch, the elders who participated in our naming consultations. I'm also extremely grateful to the staff who've worked very hard to bring us to this point. Thanks to everyone who's here to celebrate the opening of the Round Prairie Branch with us. We do have an exciting day of programming and events lined up, so I hope you'll stay and enjoy some of those. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carol. Next, please welcome Nora Cummings and Shirley Eisfister to bring greetings on behalf of the descendants of Brown Prairie. Or Shirley is going to come up. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the homeland of the Métis. I saw you come in late, Neil, <laughs> and go to the back of the room. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, that's here, and thank you very much for coming out on a day that honors not only the descendants, but the actual families who worked so hard uh, to survive out in Brown Prairie. I want to acknowledge the Reconciliation Committee. Many of you are here. And uh, Rhett, I saw you come in. And Harry, welcome. Thank you. Uh, our uh, elders, uh, descendants of Brown Prairie, many of you are here. Uh, Ken, whose whole uh, heart and soul is in Brown Prairie. And I acknowledge that and have always respected you for that. And him and his daughter Angie, uh, who is also the principal of Westmount School, and uh, they have written a book called Mammy's Memories. And so uh, for that, I'm, I'm pretty pleased my dad's in there. So, uh, Court Donnie from Westmount School, and Court brought with him today two descendants of Round Prairie, and uh, Xavier and Damien. <laughs> who are both in the fiddle program at um, St. Michael's School and who are descendants of Round Prairie. And they're actually my sister's grandchildren, so I'm very pleased that they're here. Over the years, the Métis have contributed so much to the city of Saskatoon. And we come from all walks of life, um, different educations, uh, many uh, work positions that are unique but also common. And we've always known that education is what was going to move us forward. And in 2004, am I right, 2004? We were in a partnership with the Public School Board and we'd always talked about Métis education, culture and history. And we managed to secure some funds through a, a Métis organization and Faye Maurice from Westmount School was hired to teach uh, Métis culture, history, and education. And at that time, it was just a, a thrill for us to finally be able to talk about the Métis in an education system. And from there, we had funding for two years, and then through our Kichiapi partnership with the Public School Board, it has had become from there a fully funded position, and Faye still does that in our community not only with Westmont School, but for uh, the Public School Board. And also through a partnership with the Catholic School Board, uh, we had, for a couple of years they had hired uh, different Métis teachers to promote Métis education in the Catholic school system. And then Court Donnier was hired at St. Michael's School. And St. Michael's became a um, Métis designated school. And I remember the pride, because Nora was there with me when we raised the Métis flag at St. Michael's School. And to this day it flies, and the children are in both schools are getting some language, and 
they're, they have programs fiddling in St. Michael's, uh, jigging in Westmount, and I, I, I'm sure that there's also some jigging going on at, at St. Michael's. It was an honor to have the St. Michael's kids come out and um, play their fiddles on Louis Riel Day, and they were just beginning the program. So I think that that's a bonus for our community. Round, Round Prairie it belongs to all the Métis as far as I'm concerned. And, um, and because I'm visible at a lot of events, uh, I'm acknowledged and I um, get credit for a lot of things, but it takes a lot of hard work from a lot of people and there are many, many people uh, involved and support from our First Nations uh, brothers and sisters. I designated the second row First Nations row, but <laughs> and you're all there. Um, you know, the new library uh, that will be opened later is the Dr. Grace Hennecke Library. And I'm honored for your family, Brenda, that uh, that, that uh, will happen. And I have a connection to that library. My, that's my, uh, from my husband's side of the family. So we'll be at that opening uh, also. And she was a great woman uh, who contributed much to uh, not only um, citizens, but to people who, who were challenged. So you should be proud. Uh, Lorna and Bert, you're at everything. You know? <laughs> you're involved in everything. And, and I admire how you support uh, the Métis people and the Métis community, but how you also support Round Prairie. May I want to acknowledge you for sitting on that committee and, uh, and promoting that Round Prairie become a, uh, uh, one of the branches of the Saskatoon Public Library and it is an honor for us. And to the, all the committee that, uh, that chose the Round Prairie branch. You know, the Métis have always been known as kind of a forgotten people. And some of us are pretty loud and we don't let, let people do that to us anymore. But um, we want Métis culture and history to be known. That like little things, like when, you know, Moose Woods was set up, it was the Métis people that helped the chief to find the place and get set up. That's why we have connections there. That's why we have some family on, on uh, Whitecap. They got to know each other. And they worked together. I mean, there, there's a story from uh, when we were out at the cemetery at Round Prairie that Chief Whitecap was buried out there. And, you know, I mean, that shows how close and that he was a close uh, uh, person with the Métis people of Round Prairie. So we have lots of connections. And I mean, really, we're Métis people. We definitely have First Nations bloodlines and European bloodlines. So we need to acknowledge uh, where we come from in all areas. And Jana, I want to acknowledge you for your contribution to the Reconciliation Committee but your hard work on that committee, you're always doing something, and I think they, when we want something done, everybody looks at you. And for your hard work in, in establishing uh, that we have a voice in the opening ceremonies today and that we had a predominantly Métis theme. So thank you for that. I uh, want to thank uh, Senator Nora, who is, sits on many committees and promotes the voice of the Métis uh, throughout the city of Saskatoon and as we move forward it's important to us to uh, so that our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren to come uh, know where we come from and how we're related because many of us are related Nora's my grandfather and Nora's grandma were brother and sister and people don't know that I can remember the first time we had this picture of our great-grandparents, Moses and Philomena Landry. And I remember saying to Faye, these are my great-grandparents. And Faye said, those are my great-grandparents. <laughs> and then Eileen Trudgy, I was, I was saying, Eileen, can you photocopy this picture? And she said, where'd you get that from? I said, oh, it's from, those are my great-grandparents. And she said, well, those are my great-grandparents. <laughs> And we hadn't realized, and I mean, over the years, you know, our families were all connected, but we had not realized that we were cousins. And because 
I think that probably our parents probably thought we, we would all know, but we didn't. And so from those great grandparents on that Landry side, we have tons and tons of descendants. I did a quick count of uh, Charles Landry, just one of them, and there was 177 descendants from just him. And that's not his brothers and sisters or, uh, you know, his parents. It's, it was just from him, and that's on the one, one person. So we have thousands and thousands of descendants of Round Prairie who don't just live in Saskatoon, who live all over the world and who uh, need to be able to get the information uh, on Round Prairie and need to be able to pass it on to their children. Uh, I don't have a language. My parents could speak some itchif, and they only did that when they didn't want us to know what they were saying. So um, that was the only time I heard it. It wasn't a time of pride at that time. Like, you weren't proud of who you were going to school. There was so much um, racism and bullying and everything else that you didn't go and promote language and who you are as a, an Aboriginal person in the schools. So our parents tried to protect us from that. And so what's sad about that though, is that now we have no language to pass down to our children and the grandchildren to come. And so it's imp really important for me that the schools are starting to teach the Michif language. And, and hopefully in years to come, we will have kids that are excited about learning. Uh, I've tried a few times and I'm just not good at doing it. So I think my biggest was Lilune, which I didn't say right because Norman Fleury told me how to say it properly, but it means glasses anyhow. So it, uh, those are the things that I hope for. And I really hope that one day, uh, in not only this library, but in libraries, that people will be able to have access to, um, I don't know, probably an app or something that will, they will be able to research their genealogy because the kids need to be able to do that on their own and that should be available in libraries because it would be free to do for one thing and there would be staff that could help them encourage and how to search and I think it's, it's not only about learning where they come from but it's also a, a process of educating them how to research. So I would hope that one day that would become a, a part of what the library can do. And of course, you know, we want it to start uh, here. So as a descendant of Brown Prairie, I want to say thank you very much and thank you for coming out and uh, for being a part of this opening ceremony. Uh, Gabriel Dumont is here. We have different uh, in, people from different organizations. I see we have, you know, Pat and I think I saw Linda come in. And these are from the Landry family. And, Bill, thank you from the Friendship Center for coming out before you leave for out east. And so, and Neil, everybody knows you're from the health region. So thank you once again and enjoy the rest of the day and all of the programming. Thank you so much for those words. So this concludes the formal part of our program today. The only thing we have left to do is officially open the space. So without further ado, I would like to invite Senator Nora Cummings and Carol Cooley to please come forward. And let's uh, officially count down the opening of the branch. Five, four, four three, two, two, one.